Hey, I'm Stephen Curtis Chapman, and you're watching 117 TV. Ashley here with 117 TV, and I'm joined in Nashville with Christian Music's, I'd say, most powerful, uh, successful artist, Stephen Curtis Chapman. Good to see you. Hey, Ashley. Good to see you, too. Thanks. From successful, from the cradle to the grave. Watch the hills, the curves and tunnels. Well, um, your career, as, as many of you probably know, has just been phenomenal. You've recorded 47 number one hit songs, sold over 10 million albums, received five Grammys, 57 Dove Awards. The success, I'm sure you attribute a lot of that to your faith. Oh, absolutely. Um, all of it, um, you know, it, it goes back to my earliest beginnings and my deepest roots, as it were, um, in my family growing up in a wonderful home of faith, being prayed for by my mom and uh, scripture, you know, on my way out to the school bus, hearing her quote the scripture uh, over and over again, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. My dad was uh, the minister of music at our church, kind of our choir director, mm -hmm. um, taught me how to play guitar and taught me music and all styles of music, but always our, we kind of came back to gospel music. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, it's, um, you know, clearly anybody that knows anything about my 25 <laughs> years now of doing this um, knows that my faith has not just been a part of my music, but really has defined uh, my music and most importantly, my life. Yeah, and I know your family's been through um, some really uh, difficult times, a tragic incident, losing one of your adopted daughters. And I've read where you said, actually, now when you sing songs and perform them, you sing them with a greater purpose. Yeah, you know, there's always that thing or has been over the years for me when I'm standing on stage and I'm singing these songs that I know are true. They've been written and forged in the fires of difficulty and trial and struggle, you know, that we all experience. But there's always that part of me thinking, if I'm looking out at a guy on the third row or a woman thinking, yeah, but you have no idea. Your life's pretty good and it's been pretty easy for you. Mm -hmm. And I know you've had your struggles, but, you know, I've been really low. I've been to the dark valleys. And, and I honestly have always thought, yeah, I, I can't honestly say, yeah, I've been to the darkest, deepest mm -hmm. places I could imagine going. And then five years ago, almost now, when we lost our daughter, Maria, our youngest daughter, in a very tragic uh, accident at our home, actually involving one of our other children uh, behind the wheel of one of our cars, and it's just horrible on so many levels mm -hmm. and, and tragic on so many levels. And one of the things uh, it has been, as I wrestled through what, do I sing anymore? Do I mm -hmm. even dare stand up and say all these things about God having a plan for your life and a good plan and God being love and all these things I've said? Can I still say that with conviction? And part of our journey of walking to that darkest, deepest place has brought me to a deeper place of saying, yeah, this is all true. It doesn't mean I understand it all. It doesn't mean I have it a bow wrapped around it and I can say, yeah, I really have it understanding now. If anything, I know less about this God that I sing about, but what I do know about Him, I know f for for certain, and I know at a deeper level, and I know that He is, He He has sustained us, and our faith has carried us in ways, and, and and allowed us to survive when there's nothing else that would have held us together. And so, from that place, I sing these songs, I think, with more conviction mm -hmm. and more passion. And part of the reason I loved getting to, to re-record them, even on uh, this most recent record, the record yes. I did, Deep, Deep Roots. Deep Roots, yes, by the way. Yes, there it is, speaking of. <laughs> Available um, at Cracker Barrel, yeah. Yeah, this has some of the songs that I wrote 20, 25 years mm -hmm. ago. Um, in fact, a song called My Redeemer is Faithful and True, I wrote on my very first album, co-wrote that with a friend of mine. And, um, and I've sung it for many, many years, but now I sing it at such a different place because I can say, yeah, God has really been faithful mm -hmm. to us even through the darkest, most unimaginable things that we could go through as a family. Such, such powerful words, and you've been such a great inspiration to all of our fans out there. Lastly, how would your children describe you as a dad? Because you seem like you'd be a really fun dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what they say, 
mommy's being business, daddy's being fun. Um, <laughs> sometimes, not yeah. always. My kids would say, yeah, we have a really fun dad, and we have a dad who, as you can tell in interviewing with me, I always go long. I'm always <laughs> saying too much. I'm always, there's always, thankfully, there's editors in the world that can make me sound concise. <laughs> and my children would say the same. They would say, our dad is really great, and he really can give long lectures. What? He's great with <laughs> long lectures. But I love my my time with my kids. Mm-hmm. They're my some of my best friends. My wife is my best friend. And then my sons, Caleb and Will, they're on the road now doing their own music. They were on tour with me for five years. But when they go on the road, I'm like, guys, I miss my buddies. Come yeah, back home. Yeah. So I really, I'm just grateful uh, for my family. I, I love my kids so much. That's fabulous. And thank you so much for uh, sharing your story with us. You guys be sure to tweet us at 117TV. Angels wait to join us in our praise where the angels wait to join us in our praise forevermore.